we're going to do a quick lightning round of favorite pieces this week. So you're quick. You're identifying the favorite piece just to get it out on the table and very briefly saying why it's a favorite. So let's go. Lily first, Dave next. New favorite is sky writing. Yeah, Nasser Hussein, why? I just, well, I was, I felt very lucky to get to meet and chat with him when he was visiting to make those videos. Uh, gosh, like two years, a year ago, two years ago. I don't know time anymore. Um, so cool just to meet him and chat about the poems and um, really thinking a lot about borders and travel in after COVID in a very different way. So yeah, the book is prescient. There. It's really prescient. It's great. Thank you, Lily. Dave, favorite piece followed by Amber Rose. Uh, I just want to give a shout out to uh, Flarf in general. I really like Flarf. And uh, it's funny. It reminds me of the way it started was like the SoCal affair. I don't know if you've, you've heard of that. It's a, a professor, uh, a physics professor who was really getting uh, annoyed at what he considered to be substandard academic uh, publication review standards for postmodern journals. So this physics professor wrote this complete hoax article um, about quantum gravity as being just sort of like a linguistic construct. It was total bullshit, submitted it to this postmodern journal, and they accepted it. And then he he said, oh, by the way, it's a hoax, too. So it became a big controversy. And it's it, it, Flarf sort of started like that with uh, poetry.com. And I like the way that they accepted that and just leaned into it. And then it became it just sort of like id-based poetry. Um, but I could talk more about that later. So, yeah, I mean, Flarf. if we talk about Mike McGee, who's uh, sort of on the edge of Flarf, he's, he's really also a combinist. combinist. Anyway, a, he, he's sort of an aleatory a poet, but he, he's in week 10 because of Flarf. Yeah, they basically, they published deliberately bad poetry, to put it, to put it briefly. Thank you, Dave. Amber Rose followed by Jack. Okay, my favorite piece this week is uh, Tracy Morris's African and specifically the video of the music arrangement with Val Jean T that happened at the Kelly Writers House in 2008. Yes. Um, I love watching this performance. I love what they do with um, their computers and with sound and um, just the kind of remixing that happens is really fantastic. Perfect suggestion. Thank you, Amber Rose. We're going to go to Jack, followed by Jake. Uh, I'll give a shout out to Jordan Abel's The Place of Scraps. Yay! Oh. Recently added to my po. Oh my God, amazing. Just beautiful, the, the spatiality of the erasure and the absence um, and the reclaiming of that and had me thinking a lot about uh, pronouns and possession um, and Morton Robinson's beautiful book on the white possessive. Um, that only possession can be a form of whiteness and white supremacy. So I was thinking a lot about that. Oh, Dad, I wish you were here every week. That was so <laughs> great. Jake, followed by Kate. First, I, I, I want to plug Erica Baum's <laughs> Instagram account. Uh, like, if you're not following it, oh, my God, I, I so recommend it. It's what just is like the handle? Game. How does it go? I, I, don't, I don't know. You, well, you, you, you follow it, but you don't know? I, I can tell you. <laughs> Erica Baum, what's your handle on Instagram. It's Baum, Baum dot Erica. Baum dot Erica like question that. mark. Okay, somebody will find it. We have a lot of computers here. Or Baum Erica, something like that. Okay. I have to look at it. All right. Uh, yeah. I, thank I, you. I, thank you. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm I, I love it. it. It just gives me like I I yeah I it, it's it's there's stuff there uh, very often and it's it's really awesome. Um, awesome, awesome photographs and and, uh, and 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 really, really trippy, trippy work. Uh, the city and text and, and so much more. I, I I really love it. And I also wanna wanna say uh, one more poem from um, from Mud Pop Plus, and that's Monica Della Torres' uh, six dollars eighty two cents. Mm -hmm. Good one. Yes. That's a good one. Uh, it, it, that. It's a funny poem, but it's also like it was like it made me upset. Like it, I I don't know if if that's. Uh, reaction other people have because it's an upsetting poem it addresses matters yeah, uh, sure. economic questions that are that are really just uh just upsetting make you feel like a hamster in a wheel kate followed by max my favorite thing is the accidental conversation between bergball's via and morris's african and how they each trip over the beginnings of these totally different but intertwined 
epic ethno-historical narratives and traditions. That's brilliant. Oh, I hope we get a chance to talk more about that. Thank you, Max, followed by Erica. I was also going to plug uh, Via um, because I think it, compared to the other poems for, for this week, it does the, it relishes the most in the aesthetic potential of, of the conceptual methodology. I find so it's it's a really it's a really lovely piece born from a very specific and almost strict methodology. Thank you, Max. Um, Erica K. Followed by Erica B. I I always love Rosemary Waldrop's um, shorter American memory poems. Yes, great. Um, because of the way that she uses the n plus seven constraint to reclaim foundational documents and offer commentary on the rituals and impositions of citizenship. Mm -hmm. I would also say that in Madpo Plus, um, the Aaron Moray poem, I think, is in conversation with the Waldrop in interesting ways, and that's under the Canadian sampler. Erica Baum, which of your pieces floats your boats the best? Well, I'm actually, I chose something which, um, I'm throwing it out to everybody because I'm really curious to hear what people think about it. It's not, I wouldn't say it's my favorite dog ear, but it often is other people's favorite. And I'm always wondering, it's one where I actually wonder what it means to people. So I'm throwing it out very, very short. It's differently. And it goes like this. Yes. Yes. How? I? I would not do that differently. So oh, I'm just kind of throwing that. that out there because... Curious what everyone, what people make of that one, and oh. also I love the um, I love to be here for Erica Day, and I love Erica's choice for a favorite too. Really do. Lainey Brown, favorite thing. I'm gonna say Erica Baum's card catalog, because in her work I'm understanding the technology of reading past, present, and future. Wow, that was succinct. Mm -hmm. Can you say just a little more? Well, some people might say that reading a book is a antiquated technology. I wouldn't say that, but I think it's really common now that a lot of people don't read physical books. I have a lot of love and nostalgia for card, card catalogs, um, but I never imagined them in the way that Erica Baum did in her brilliant photographs where we have words we have collisions between words and we have words suspended and they bring up all kinds of questions that take me back to Stein's portrait of Picasso and history teaches. Kanar? Sure. Um, I guess I'm kind of continuing Lainey's thought just a little bit. Um, I wanted to, uh, yeah, shout out Erica Baum's dog ear. Um, it just had me thinking quite a bit about what it is even is to dog ear a text and how um, kind of predicated that action is on the idea that you return, that you revisit that text and that, you know, some, some core elements going to still be there and be the same for you, or at least be something that you can have the sense of, of, of you know, uh, having visited, having been there before. And, and it seems like often though, when you dog ear something and you go back, it actually has changed profoundly or you've changed or the thing that kind of bookend, bookends your kind of visiting of that text is different. Um, so I'm just fascinated thinking about dog ears, thinking about what it is to kind of return to different moments in texts um, and just, yeah, how, how we read things privately or, or publicly and how precarious that kind of process is and we can't actually nail down what our experience is or, or will have been. Bing, bing, bing. Yes, Erica Baum is the winner. She's got three votes so far in this <laughs> round, including one of her own, but there it is. Um, yeah. thank, thank you, Kanar. Okay, Shantine has a mic, I believe, and uh, Jason will be after that. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, you can bring down your mask if you want to oh, be clearer. Okay. It's, you're far away from us. I think, okay. Um, I really like uh, Bergvall's Via, um, especially after Al's office hours this morning, talking about- That was so great, wasn't it? Yes. Wow. The imperfections of translation and yet the desire, the like innate human desire to continue to do so. And even just thinking about Erica Baum's poem that she just read, it kind of gets at that notion, I feel, too, of like trying to connect between um, 
people and understanding each other. Thank you, Shantine. That was great. Okay, Jason and then Ali, uh, quick uh, uh, reference to a favorite piece, and then we're going to turn to Erica Baum. Yeah, I love, uh, I have to say, this is the really hard week to choose from. And um, I'd say Erica Baum's Dog Ears, which I have always loved and makes us think about the materiality of each occasion of text and to go with that. Uh, um, I was really into Tracy Morris's Chain Gang and Mob Pope Plus. I loved all of Tracy Morris, all of Erica Baum, um, but the Tracy Morris work this week was really making me think of like someone, you know, ripping open uh, like a loaf of bread and showing all the extra, both good and bad inside. <laughs> love that. Thank you, Allie. Your favorite? I really love uh, sky writings and dog ear for kind of similar reasons just uh like they're such wonderful visual like instances on the page too um and just kind of like scrolling through dog ear like i want to just like wrap my like bedroom in just like different panels of how it looks so yeah just i've been appreciating uh the visuals mm -hmm on the page in addition to like trying to make meaning of like the combinations.